Hello and welcome to this little new video. In this video, I would like to speak to you about writing clean, neat and elegant code. And in today's topic, it will be about removing redundant things. And indeed, it's so tempting to add too much or to have our code doing things that are not really minimalist harder to maintain and after it might also lead to confusion to other future developers joining the team, joining the code base. So here, removing the redundant things, that's actually um, a, a section, kind of a topic, part of my book, Good JS Code, so Good JS Clean Code. If you wish to know more about it, it's on my GitHub. So my GitHub good JS code. If you go to GitHub, I will actually write it here down there. It's HTTPS. So you can have a look later if you wish. Sorry, it's github.com for slash p h dash seven. And you will see the repository from there. You can even do uh, yeah, repositories, but yeah. So GitHub dot com for slash ph dash seven or you can go to my website https and then for slash for slash ph seven dot me all right so now let's get to this one and when we code we often tend to write unnecessary things indeed which don't increase the readability of our code either for instance in a switch statement, having a default clause that isn't used for what? Um, so here we can see that quite often. I had my colleagues, my teammates, um, I have been working for quite a lot of different companies and I see that quite often. Why to have a default if you, and then you have a break there. Here too, why to have a break if you do through new, if you throw an exception, you don't need a break statement. Same here, you don't need a break statement. You have a return. This one is redundant. This one is redundant. You can just remove that one. You don't need that. And then the same here. No, you don't need it. Like you, you do nothing. So a better idea, a better solution would be this. And here we have our switch statement. We have the return. If we do return, we do exit from the switch, so we don't need a break. And the same here, default, then it's a better idea to have a through new and then we, we throw an error instead of having something that does nothing. Don't do this. And this code you can see is shorter, it's cleaner. We just have what we need and it's more explicit. Yeah, that's, an, <laughs> that's quite a different topic, but we can also speak about it. Ego, be careful. Or also when we are doing code reviews, I have done code reviews a lot for those kind of redundant code. And some of your teammates might be a bit upset if they have a big ego. They would say, oh no, uh, what are you saying? This is, um, this is good, I know what I'm doing, but no, they don't. I mean, they probably know what they are doing, but they have to be open for suggestions, for you know feedback. And if you don't see feedback as a learning experience, it would be hard for you to improve yourself, to be a better software engineer. So always um, see any kind of feedback, recommendations or comments on your, on your PR, on your pull request as a learning experience. It's a learning improvement. It's something really good. When your teammates tell you, uh, better options to do things, it will make you a better engineer and it will help you to be then a mid software engineer, a senior software engineer and so on. So it's something so grateful and you should be so happy when you have comments on your code, on your PR. Sometimes they are not really relevant, but some other time it's like, wow, today I learned so much thanks to you thanks to what you just told me. And that's really important. So always like feedback is extremely helpful for you. See every feedback, like I said, as a learning experience. When you write code, 
It's not your code. It's everybody else's code. Don't take what you write personally. It's just a little part of the whole vessel, of the whole you know, software. Don't use abbreviation. That will be the last one for today. Abbreviation, again, is hard to understand. Even PPL for people for a long time, I didn't know what meant PPL. So just write it a bit longer, maybe, but don't write abbreviations that is hard to understand what it means. And I've seen a lot of abbreviations for the specific software, specifically for that software. And of course, any new joiners will not understand what that abbreviation uh, means. So don't use abbreviation. It will be really hard to understand. Instead, do something cleaner like this. And that will be so much helpful. And the same here, no need to have, um, sorry, fn or function as a suffix. Oh yeah, same. Sometimes you would have index fn function, but why? Just, you don't even need an abbreviation here. Don't, don't have that kind of suffix. Having function or method for an actual function is redundant because it is a function. So when you write your function name index fn or index function, it doesn't mean anything. Like it's, of course, it's a function. So just keep it as index. And here for the abbreviation, you see here we don't have abbreviation anymore. And that's much, much cleaner. As a company I'm working at the moment, we use a lot of PPPP for partition, perhaps. Um, for partner, again, that, that's a hard one, partner, partitioner. We have a lot of um, typos as well in our code base about partitioner, partition, partitioner, partitioner. Oh, that sounds <laughs> crazy to say. Let me just, oh, my phone is here. And if I just check here on Google, and let's do that. It's nice to have a spelling extension with VS Code to make sure you don't make typo. Partner, partitioner. Partitioner. Oh, I will maybe just write it. Partner, party. Even me, I don't really know how to say it. To be honest, it's crazy, right? Uh, oh, the first uh, result is... <laughs> it's funny because the first... Uh, on Google, the first one I see is the company I'm working for, the website. But I want to partner, practitioner. Practitioner, yeah. So that was correct. T I O N E R. Yeah, um, I think I, I forgot the, the typo we have in the code base. But yeah, we have a lot of PP um, in um, the company I was working before. It was a company that got acquired by a much bigger company, Honeywell. And a lot of abbreviations didn't make sense anymore because the abbreviation was specifically made for the company before with the name of the company that, that got acquired by Honeywell. And so after it was even redundant, those abbreviations. So really abbreviations are not good. Don't make abbreviations. Also with PHP, there, there, are, there are a lot of, of function, function names with abbreviations. And it is so hard. I mean, it's a bit painful. So like F open for file open, that's okay. But like, um, what was the name? F, um, <laughs> it has been a while actually, I didn't use PHP now. So I was using those function all the time for uppercase first, PHP first, character, uppercase, and you have the lowercase T. Oh yeah, UC first. UC first. So you see, that one is of course always harder to, to use. So you have like UC first, LC first, which was to convert. So LC first is to convert the first character of a string to a lowercase. LC, so lower, LC first, lower convert, so convert the first character of a string to lower, to lowercase. 
You see words, that one so helpful, but again, the name is not that, I mean, it's not the best name. You see words. So that one, it converts the first character of each word in a string to uppercase. STR, so STR to upper, so convert a string to uppercase. STR for string, of course. STR to, that's the function names. And str to lower, it means to convert a, a string to a lowercase, to lowercase. str to lower. You see, like, it's not that easy to, um, to, to get them, the names, if you're not really used to those kind of abbreviations. When you are doing PHP all the time, it's, of course, it's part of yourself, you know, it, it grows on you. But then after, it's, in my case, when I look at them back, it's still, I think the names are not great, uh, but with, with PHP, unfortunately, there are a lot of um, with those kind of uh, function names. Now, of course, I like PHP very much. Uh, don't get me wrong. And PHP, like I've been using PHP 7, 8 also quite a lot, and it did improve so much from PHP 5 and even PHP 4. I started with PHP 4 and then 5 and then 7 and then 8, 8.2 um, as well, which is one of the latest versions. And, and yeah, so it's good, but the, yeah, the functions, now I can see with Laravel, they have like str of Laravel and Symfony, they, those two frameworks, they really, they contributed a lot in the ecosystem of PHP and they made PHP better. They did help PHP to, to be, you no, know, uh, to be as good as the other languages for nowadays, uh, because of course a language has to improve over time. Um, in 1990, 1990 is not the same as 20, 20, uh, 2000 and 2010 is not the same as, as 2024, 2024. So that's why we always have to improve the way we write. STR, yeah. I'm looking at all of the names. As you see, it's, um, yeah, it's funny. So yeah, that's it for the abbreviations as well. And I will see you in another video. I wish you all the best. Again, keep those um, advice, I mean, the pieces of advice I shared with you in mind and apply them even just already today, because otherwise just, you know, learning in a passive way and not in an active way is pointless. You have to be an active learner and not a passive learner. So just do it and I wish you a happy coding day.